Ha! Huh. Shiroi! Pedro! The Shrek movie, <laughs> it seems a bit more goofy than I remember it being. Seems extremely goofy. Uh, well, to be fair, Jova, um, Far Far Away is very, very far away, so I guess uh, we had to make a pit stop, maybe? <laughs> oh. uh, Jova, I told you we should have had more petrol put in the car, but did you listen to me? No. Hey, 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 sure I was the one driving to this location. Take it up with her. It's her pick. I am the last person you guys should have let drive. No, this no, is no, on Shiri. all of you. She already had me drive. Wait, 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 sure, sure, sure. So you're saying that you're the Velma of our Scooby gang? I guess. <laughs> Jinkies. Okay, so... Anyway. Uh, sure, so Roy, why don't you tell Shrek, audience what, what we're we doing? doing? We're doing an extremely goofy movie, which isn't Shrek at all. Hey, the what sequel you, to my birthday about? pick. What are you talking That's about, Shrek? Sure, it's, totally, it's totally like Shrek. The characters are animated... Um, uh, Go on. It's, uh, it's uh, one of the characters is an idiot. <sighs> it starts an unlikely protagonist. An unlikely protagonist? In the 2000s. I don't uh, see Daddy, 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 Daddy. Goofy is, was very much a common protagonist around the time. I, uh, I'm just saying for, like, you know, how, how it's, like, the hero, how you... Okay, 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 regardless. Long story short, but due to behind-the-scenes uh, stuff here and there, we ended up having to change some Shrek to an extremely goofy movie. And this is eerie because in our earlier commentaries in this trend, we mentioned Polly Shore and an extremely goofy movie, and apparently fate decided to listen to that, and here we are now. And Anyway, shall we begin? Yes. 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 Okay, sure, I tell the audience where to start. Uh, start before um, a black Goofy's screen face. for about three seconds, and then Goofy's face. Goody. Yay. So, all right, three, two, one, click. So the Shrek commentary was ogre before it started. <laughs> well done, Shiroi. Yeah, wow. you know, surprisingly, this doesn't seem to open as corporately as you would expect with all the opening logos and no, whatnot. It's mostly that they have the the goofy face, but they don't have the music that goes with that image. So this movie came out in early two thousand. Oh, yes. and boy, does this it show! Movie, and this movie is a, re a more of a return to what Goof Troop was more like. What brings back the extreme uh, um, vibe of the original show. I mean, okay. To be fair, the original movie did have some extreme '90s stuff, especially with the power line stuff as well. That said, though, I think from what I understand, a lot of people's is uh, is well uh, criticism well, yeah, of this movie. But that movie was simply just simply goofy, Joe. But this movie's not just goofy; it's extremely goofy. From what I understand, the main criticisms people have about this movie is that a lot of people see it as the turning point where Disney was starting to show a lot more more of their corporate side, which will become more apparent when we get to a certain company that shows up in this movie. Honestly, my, my actually, my biggest problem with this movie is actually more so, actually at the beginning, actually. I don't have much of a problem with what happens after. It's more so the beginning here. Uh, I'll, I'll bring it up when we get to it. So basically, now the movie opens a... up with Max and his friends going to college. So, yeah, that... uh, we... uh, I'll comment more on that didn't, later. Didn't Jason Marsden voice Max in the first movie? Or was that someone else? Yeah. I think so, yes. Yes. Hang on, let me check the dates exactly. This was February 29th in 2000. And yes, Polly Shore is back to voice um, Bobby. And Jason Marsden is also back as Max. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. That's actually kind of funny. This film came out three days after the weekend has started, which also starred Jason Marsden. <laughs> yeah, Jason Marsden was on top of the world around the time of this movie. And of course, we have Bill Farmer as Goofy. And Jim Cummings as Pete, of course. Does the Goof Troop song show up in this movie? No. 
No. Nah. The, the movies never actually reference anything from the show itself. Like, Pete doesn't even have uh, his wife and daughter for some reason in the movies. A lot of people's this headcanon. Did they leave him? Uh, well, that's been a lot of people's this headcanon in regards to connecting these to the movies. Unfortunately, there was a bit of disconnect between this and the first movie because you know how Max and Roxanne were developing their relationship? Yeah, apparently that's Roxanne not the. Said this movie. Yeah, Hans and Mouse did did keep the relationship in some of Roxanne's appearances, but yeah, then this movie came out and people were asking, "Where the hell is Roxanne?" Now, a lot of people pointed out that who even... the hell cares about Roxanne? Uh, uh, I do. A lot of people cared about Roxanne actually, to the point where some people what? wanted to show up in a Kingdom Hearts game. Anyway, I uh, can, can 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 Max come up could show up first. Okay, oh, maybe, obviously, okay, okay. yeah. To be fair, to be fair, maybe you can make an argument that somewhere along the line, um, they just, you know, drifted apart and stuff like that. Because that happens, to be fair, with... Um, a lot of people pointed out the... 15-year-old uh, romances and stuff like that. A lot of people have pointed out the missed opportunity, though, in seeing how they would have to age up and possibly split apart. But... Yeah. You know, small potatoes. This, you know, this is Disney. Course, you will be young forever. In the oh, meantime, God. Goofy's, of course, uh, sad that uh, Max is finally leaving home. Wait, okay. So, so it's been months since we last saw a Goofy movie. Didn't they graduate from high school? What? Yes. No, and yes. Now, and, yes, well, yes, yes. Of well, course well, they had to, to go to college. Okay. Wait, wait, oh. wait. Or you... Okay, okay, okay. So it's like... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dead. Are you asking if they graduated from high school in a Goofy movie? Yeah. No, 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 no. That was just them finally getting to go on summer break. Yeah. Uh... The, the, the Goofy movie never told us which grade they were in. Uh, okay. So we can just assume they were in the middle or just in the first year of high school, maybe? Because uh, as you can see, it's clearly years later. Anyway, this is pretty much the extremely goofy movies equivalent to the perfect cast on the first film, where yeah. instead of being able to catch a fish perfectly, it's being able to throw a horseshoe wood. Ah, uh, but yeah. Oh, I thought the joke was going to be, sorry, Goofy, there aren't any months left. You should have been faster. Wait, this is actually wait. a scene that uh, I would have written differently if I was writing this, but I'll get into it. Max, what are you doing with Shaggy's iconic t-shirt? Uh, the red? What, are they implying Disney's going to buy Warner Brothers? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, 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 they were going to before they decided to do Fox. Wait. They were okay. Okay, there you yeah. go. Um, okay, okay. Don't get me wrong. I'm okay. I'm okay with Goofy, of course, being sad that Max is going away. Of course, obviously, it's Goofy we're talking about here. However, here's the thing. At the end of the first movie, um, for Max finally accepted his father for 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 how he was. And remember, this is also illustrated by the final scene of a Goofy movie, where Goofy once again throws himself into the sky and literally crashes into the porch. Of, of Roxanne's house, and Max, instead of you know cringing like he did in the beginning of the movie, would just smile and go, "Roxanne, I'd like to, you to meet my father." So to have him once again go back to this thing where he's just in a hurry to get away from his father just seems to be a, a very a, a contrary to the development uh, he went through in the first movie. To be honest with you, because I the the first movie was uh, his arc in the first movie was to finally accept his father for how he was and not just you know like. And I don't, so I don't like this, uh, the, the, did you notice earlier when he was like, oh, don't worry, dad, it will go too fast. It will go fast. Not too fast, I hope. I, I would have, here's how I would have written this mm. scene. I would have written like the farewell between Andy and his mom in the Toy Story 3. You know, where the, where the, where Google will be like, oh, I would love to spend more time with you. Oh, don't worry, dad, you will. So something more, more tender rather than just going for the rebellious team. Okay. Shake. Okay. To be fair to Max. I do get why he wants to get out. It's more so the usual bout of when kids go to college, they like the very, 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 very wide sense of independence and freedom and whatnot. It's not so much that Max is, like, you know, embarrassed of his dad again. It's more so just a case that, well, he obviously is looking forward to having more of his own life to himself. Like, yes. as somebody who's also mm -hmm. gone to college, I totally get this feeling, you know, being able to well, really be your own boss, essentially, at college. 
Is that breakfast for two people? It looks like that could be the family of 20. I don't know, I still feel like, uh... Hey! A Goof Trips reference! That's nice. I, I don't know, I still think uh, Andy and his mom's style of farewell would have been more appropriate for me. That is not a good breakfast. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's how, that's how I had breakfast when I was working at Whole Foods. What's the Dunkin' and Donuts before they open? I'm like, oh. Look at the best part about that place. <laughs> well, look at it this way, Goof. Now you can bring in all the chicks uh, for for a party uh, at your house. One is the loveliest. And now you have a... And now you have yeah, all the more free time to hang out with that spiky-haired kid with the big key you tend to do jobs with. By the way, Goofy, you haven't hanged out with Mickey in a while. Um, why don't you do that? Yeah. Uh, we couldn't, we Sorry, couldn't get... Mickey's too busy being a detective. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't get Mickey for this movie. It's and like Donald in, is, it's uh... like It's like in, it's like in that weird 90s Disney cartoon. Where, he, where there's an episode where it was just him in a cage and he doesn't come out. Also, Pedro, it's only you mentioned that supposedly Max and Roxanne were on the House of Mouse together before this movie, because actually House of Mouse started in 2001. So, oh, was it? Yeah, so technically, no, they brought back Roxanne after this movie. So I was, I was under the impression that it started like in the late 90s or something. No, no. No. Well, whatever. Yeah, like, that was like the so, last so, thing so, they did with Mickey for a while. It was interesting because uh, there's an episode of House of Mouse where he's just as old as he is here, and Roxanne is there as well. So yeah. I'm guessing House of Mouse basically just ignored this movie. Well, no, 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 no. I think House of Mouse implies that this is what he did. You know, you know, maybe this is what he does on his summer breaks from college, essentially, which also implies that he and Roxanne got back together. So that's nice. And then you have uh, an ex uh, Mickey's Twice Upon Christmas where Max brings home a girl for Christmas. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Boy, that would have been thought, a great start sorry, to the college. Um, sorry, I, I just had flashbacks to the... Uh, to okay. A, I just had flashbacks to one of the finales of Waterloo Road. Where basically it ended with them about to go into Scotland to see the new school. Okay. And then they got hit by a bloody lorry. <sighs> Please don't speak too much, okay, Paul? Thanks. But anyway... Well, okay, uh, that is one mm -hmm. amazing thing about this movie. Pauly Shore, despite having a much expanded role, is... Well, not as annoying as Pauly Shore normally I just, is. I, just, I actually just thought of another theory, Shira, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, much like... Uh, maybe it's kind of like the first American Pie, where, um, where Vicky uh, and Kevin... Uh, at the end, um, they decide to just break up uh, instead of uh, because they're going to completely different colleges far away from each other. So they decide it's best not because they it, it's best to break it up break it up now before we have a, an, a worse breakup. Remember that. So maybe you can argue maybe that's what happened. Maybe she went to a a, a college that's like far away from his. Mm -hmm. So I mean, uh, uh, oh, that, 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 that would be a better. That would definitely be a better. Way to end it. Like I just wish you could have thought, given some kind of context on it. I thought, I thought for a second there he was wearing orange and there's lockers around him. I thought he ended up in prison. I was gonna say, it's like, wait, when did he go to jail? No, no, no. It's just his new job <laughs> yeah. where he works is at that, a toy factory. Is that, is that why they call it an extremely goofy movie? Because well, the situation actually, is well, extreme. Well, this ain't your father's goofy well, movie. Well, well, Dwebs, if we go back to the 1940s shorts, then yeah, he he was in jail at some point. Yeah, we're gonna do an extremely actually, goofy movie. Actually, What's goofy in the penitentiary? Actually, 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 one thing I do love about House of Mouse is that it kind of does the Looney Tunes movies thing and actually does consider shorts from the 40s, 60s, and whatnot as part of the continuity of the characters. Well, yeah. It, it, technically, it is. So. You know, maybe he is in prison. He went on a bender because he was still upset about his son leaving and caused some, uh... Drunken misconduct. Wow, he he works just like uh, that episode where the red guy is the boss of his factory. <laughs> yeah, because that works. <laughs> oh. Uh, what is Scoopy? Is Scoopy gonna get fired? 
More, I think Goofy could sue the company for how much a safety hazard that is. Yeah, and then you'll lose the lawsuit. Cat from Cat Dog. Told you. Oh, dang it. Wait, wait. They're not even letting him leave with his own two feet. They drag him out of the building? Yeah. Not to forget, that's an extreme skating board action. Uh, but I just saw Goofy get fired. Pedro. See, this is the one. Remember, Webs, uh, we're tied on one. We're we're tied on time for in terms of runtime, so we have to move on with the first the pacing. Yes, uh, just Pedro. Isn't it one hell of a coincidence that we just finished watching a college, mo a Disney college movie a few days ago, only to watch another one? Uh, well, which one did you watch no, back then? No, no, Monsters I, University. I, 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 I showed a Monsters University. I really enjoyed it, actually. It's because, uh, not, well, that uh, college movies are very appealing to teenagers, so that's just common. I'm just saying, it's one hell of a coincidence that we watched the sure, sure, sure. Man a couple days. Well, Disney has made plenty of college-based movies. It's not uh, like uh, so; it's not that big of a coincidence. Oh, that guy! That seriously, that guy, this guy here, yeah, the the leader of this group. This guy, a lot of the stuff he does makes no sense. Also, his look at his. Animation. He looks like he's animated just like Cusco from from yeah. Emperor's New Groove. The problem is that no other character is animated like him. Like yeah. it's it, there's something off about this facial animation. I, I can't quite place what it is. That guy is Bradley Uppercrust the Third, the leader of the Gamma Moo Moo fraternity, played by our beloved Jeff Bennett. Yes, that Jeff Bennett. Well, more Jeff Bennett voice actors are there. Uh. So yeah, Dexter. So yeah, basically, this is what Dexter's dad was doing in college. Hey guys, did you know that Disney owned ESPN? Yep. No. Okay. Oh, the Goo Father. The, 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 the Goofinator. Wait, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. If everything's named after Goofy, does Goofy have some licensing deals in this universe? No. Apparently. Ah. That, De Dez, 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 let's not forget, it's established that Goofy knows Mickey Mouse, who was established in a Goofy movie, has all his uh, franchise and merchandise going off okay, of that so here's so my, here's my... losing his job. Okay, yeah, so here's, yeah, here, that's my counter argument. If he knows Goofy and has licenses, why is he going back to college to get a job, even though he could have easily just had it's royalty? Simple. Goofy's too proud to ask Mickey for that and wouldn't want to just rely on the crutch of that. The characters in this particular club are, um, okay. something. Okay. Sorry, Bates, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Let me put it like this. Here's the difference between this and a Goofy movie. Oh. With a Goofy movie, the idea was that it was mainly... Most of the Goofy stuff came from Goofy himself, where everything else was as realistic as it could be in a world involving Goofy. Here, it feels like a lot more of the characters are acting just as Goofy, if not more Goofy than Goofy himself. Which... Again, I was never... I never went to college. Is this a college thing where we just start snapping poetry. our fingers repeatedly for no reason? In Did, some... No, in no, no, some... this is a poem club. Yeah, yeah. It's a poetry oh, slam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Looks like someone's not cultured. Look at his face. Like... Oh my yeah, God. he looks like a, a Chad. Wait, 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 wait. You know, come to think of it, he does look like what Dexter's. He looks like. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He does look like what Dexter's dad would look like as a goofy character, and they're both just... same by, and they're both played by the same character. Maybe this is what Dexter's dad did in his past. So okay. Jeff like, uh, character? Co compare Max's face with uh, Robert's face. Is, is that his name, Robert? No, um, no, no, Bradley. Bradley with Bradley's face. Uh, like, I'm pretty confident Bradley is an, an under the effect of some kind of illegal substance. Because the way he opens it, look at his eyes whenever he opens up his eyes. Like, seriously. I mean, he is in college. I know, but it's just that, like, um, he's the only character, Shiroi, who looks like that. That's the thing. Maybe that's the point. 
I'm so here's the thing. The Gammas want him to join them, but they want only him. But they don't want PB and Bobby to join. So I'm just gonna point this out. The only reason that there is mainly conflict is because they wouldn't let Max's friends also join. Trust me, in the future, they could have saved themselves a lot of pain if they wait, just let them Ma all join. Wait, Max, wait, Max defending his friends so much against these guys. Are you sure? Uh, and Jason Marsden's in it. I'm, I'm pretty sure for this part of the movie, they got that, this part of the script mixed up with the one from the weekend, from a Weekenders episode. And so they just left it in the movie. Oh yeah, and he's trained all of his lackeys like dogs. Get it? Because they are dogs. Except for Pete, who's a cat. Mm. You, you mean PJ? So, so that's it, PJ. Sorry. Any, any PJ? I know it's well, well, PJ. Well, 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 doesn't PJ technically uh, stand for Pete Junior anyway? I guess so. Yes. So yeah, he is Pete too. So. I don't know what PJ is up to when Pete is still working for Maleficent. Uh, that's a good question, actually. I mean, the obvious answer is alternate universes things so that, you know, the right. Three Musketeers established. It's okay, because uh, Miss, um, whoever she is, is going to save them. All right, um... so the screenwriter for this film, uh, Scott Gordon, uh, hasn't done anything <laughs> since, uh, totally, since a Totally Spies episode in 2004. Anyway, Pedro, to answer your question, this girl is called Beret Girl in the movie. Hmm. He also wrote stuff like Saved by the, Saved by the Bell and new, the New Class, the original one in Full House, etc. Et oh my god, she's voiced by Vicky Lewis! Yeah, check this out. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry, but this lo clearly looked way cooler in the writers' and directors' heads. It doesn't look, it's just, this just looks awkward to me. Jello, we need to show Pedro that f Proud Family episode. So, anyway, Pedro, you may be interested to know that the woman playing Beret Girl, she was also Deb and Flo from Finding Nemo, she was Iris West in the Justice League the New Frontier movie, and she was Persephone in the Wonder Woman 2009 film, which you enjoyed, but she's She's Eve also Eve from Alpha, Alpha and Omega. Omega. So basically she's a veteran voice actress, gotcha. Yeah. She's also Ada from Seinfeld. Oh, okay. Oh, and she was Harriet in Grey's Anatomy. She's been in loads that of stuff. That arachnid from the Her from the Hercules show. The animated one, you mean? Mm-hmm. You're goofy. Why are you at the unemployment office? Again, Dwibs. He's too proud because to mooch. Have... He's too proud because to of... mooch off of Mickey. Because Dwibs, uh, we need to set up the plot line where he goes back to college so we can have some wacky shenanigans. Well, don't you see? He didn't get his full four years of college. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Goofy always goes for simple jobs that don't require a college degree, but whatever. I guess this is so... I'm surprised how, how, the, how the workplace has been quite really over. Yeah. I get to be fair, yeah, if this if they're going for the social commentary angle, I do get it. Because, you know, nowadays jobs will only look at you if you have a special degree or whatnot, and then it grows into experience and need for that. Oh, Unless so he's you... going to end up as a senior student at uh, Max's college? Yes. Oh, uh, wacky. So basically, if I understood correctly, like... Uh, the system is broken, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, look, it's that meme that everyone... Well, <laughs> well, well technically, well, technically uh, practically every education system is broken, so I guess that just goes appropriate. 
that happened. No, there's a meme that puts the oh, that puts Sephiroth over Goofy's head. It's like, hi everybody, and you have Cloud screaming, and Mario's <laughs> yeah. right next to him. Hey, Goofy, the seventies called. They want their their lameness back. Hey, the seventies were not lame. Yeah, they were. No, they weren't. Yeah, they were. <laughs> have you seen? What this kind guy of is dead, Jova. You gotta let go. What, have you seen what kind of clothing they had in the seventies? We're Jeez. bringing it back, damn it! Besides, no. besides, besides, besides. See, Max agrees. Be besides, Austin Powers showed that Beyonce can make the seventies work still. Also, Goofy, how did you manage that afro? You have no hair. Well, don't you see? His hair is there. He's just had it very compressed. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean. Pedro, he's an anthropomorphic dog. There's a lot we don't know about Goofy. Heck, like, how, how can Goofy and Max exist, but then you have Pluto? Exactly. But you don't. You don't want to go again, Deji. We don't. You don't want to go down that road. Maybe, you... maybe Goofy and Max are uh, experiment lab experiments. Twiz, you don't want to go down this rabbit hole. You will never be able to get out of it. Maybe it's like I've Splatoon, already... where not I've everyone already... evolved. But I've already gone no? down it, Pedro. <laughs> Too late for me. So yeah, to... yeah in, that case, in that case, I'm gonna have to abandon you, uh, to your luck. Good brothers. It's been nice knowing you. No, no, come on, Pedro. No making off like a disappeared <laughs> dad. <laughs> he chose to go down and do it. That doesn't mean I have to go uh, after him. I'm not, gonna... I'm not going down that road, I, I can't. I won't. <laughs> you know, if Superman had that mentality. Yeah, afros, because afros are cool. Mm, yeah. Uh, did afros ever make a reemergence in the 2000s? Because I don't. I wanted an afro. Yes. I can't. Do it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> dwibs, dwibs, dwibs. Afros are still very much a thing. It's just that the 70s popularized them. They weren't a trend that died out. They were always a thing. They were just, you know, most notable in the 70s. Mm hmm. Yeah, some people just have afros. Yeah. And they're lucky. Yeah, tell me about it. It requires a lot of hair maintenance for that thing to even... Ah, ah, it. Hey, it's worth it. Yes. Mm, I'm too lazy to maintain that. I don't even have enough hair for it anyway. Wow, a lot of talk we've gotten out of afros, but anyway... Also, um... <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what these X games are, exactly. Hmm, I wonder. Maybe X stands for EXTREME! No, it stands for EXACTLY. The EXACTLY games. Yeah, first class is until noon. Uh, uh, also, uh... I posted a, pic the, a picture in the chat featuring Disney Logic. Yeah, E come out. Yeah, basically there's a comic where Minnie gets scared by a fucking uh, uh, mouse, even though she's a mouse herself. Don't you see? She's a civilized mouse, but those mice, they aren't people. Again, no, no, no. They're, they're, even though they are technically animals, they're still classified as humans well, to some degree. Oh, Pedro, remember, this is the same company that that that, that released a book where apparently <laughs> pirate, uh, pirates would never take over people's property. So basically, it's the two thousand. It's it's two thousand, and Goofy and Peach are still playing an, a do, an old DOS PC game. Oh, okay. <laughs> retro is cool. I, mm, back in 2000, the retro fad that wasn't really a thing still. Uh, you and me grew up in different 2000s because the retro fad was all over the place in the 2000s. The year 2000? Yes! Oh, heck yes! I don't think I remember seeing a Weekenders episode like that, and that came out in 2000s as well. <laughs> anyway. This is Bill Farmer practicing his non is is anti goofy dialogue for Kingdom Hearts. Uh, have you watched Amphibia? Because he voices one of the main characters. And I'm like, oh, Bill he's Farmer? using his goofy voice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, really? actually, Dwebs, well, actually, Dwebs, Goofy's actually one of the better written characters in the Kingdom Hearts series, actually. Believe it or not, he's. he's... I, meant his, I meant his dialogue. He's secretly. Oh, but even, but even the dialogue, the dialogue's fine. Goofy I mean, is a bit. Goofy is basically the stealth smart one of the trio. 
Yeah, basically. A lot of times Sora and Donald will be um, oblivious to something and Goofy's the one that actually points it out. So uh, Goofy's actually very well written in the, in, the, in the games, actually. Yeah. I have many criticisms about that series. Goofy ain't one of them. Ah! But Max is about to do something to get his father off his tail. Little does he know he's about to get his dad set up. Yeah, we kind of figured that out on our own. Hey, 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 just because somebody's at a desk, you don't assume. Anyway, this is Sylvia Marple, voiced by Bebe Neuwirth. Bebe? Ha, <laughs> the Dewey Decimal System. What? That's a thing. What's so funny? No, because you can kind of consider it kind of a, uh, you know, a reference to Dewey in, in, in itself, I guess, maybe, considering it's Disney. Uh, normally I'd agree with you, but no, that's legit just what the Dewey Decimal System no, is no, no, called. No, I get, I get that, uh, Java, but that's exactly why they, they went out of their way to say it, maybe. Oh, I'm hey, saying. look, a Little Mermaid reference. There you go, see? See, this movie well, is... Actually, they were referencing Gilligan's Island. Did Disney own Gilligan's Island? Let me see. Yeah, there you go, see? They bond <laughs> over their love for the 70s. The Boogie Duck. Oh, yeah, I remember the Boogie Duck. Uh, Joe, I can answer that question for you. No. It's Warner Brothers. Wow, they have Jim Cummings voicing a lot of characters in this movie. I can't stop. Uh, sometimes I feel like when they do that, it, it's probably to save money. Yeah. yeah more Jim Cummings is always. Yeah, 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 yeah. When they have yeah, one person voicing a lot of characters, it's, that's probably it. Uh, not, not to mention being Portuguese, I'm used to having voice actors uh, voice a shit ton of characters uh, all at once. Look, Joe, Joe and I grew up on Funimation anime where he used to having the same, like, five voice actors. Uh -huh. Well, that, gee, that's actually kind of how most of early 90s dubs over here went, actually. Yeah. Because, so. Don't they still kind of go that way from what you've told me? Yes. Uh, well, yeah. not as much because now there's actually more of a budget compared to how it was in the 90s, but yeah. Um, we still have a lot. Of, uh, we specialize more in versatility. Like basically, Deji, the best way to get far in the voice acting industry over here is by being versatile with your voices, basically, because um, we tend to try to economize, like uh, minimize costs by having actors do a lot of roles. And it's just not even, even when we do have budget, we just choose it because that's how we prefer anyway. So yeah, Goofy's getting laid. So basically, they've gotten us. So, so let me get this straight. You took away Goofy's. Sorry, you took away Max's love interest and instead gave one to Goofy. Perfectly balanced. As, as everything all should be. Of course. Did this come up before or after the Disney skateboarding game? I don't know. I do know that they made an extremely goofy movie video game based off of this, which was essentially a skateboarding game. Uh huh. Was it? Did it play like Tony Hawk Pro Skater? I think it may have, but don't quote me on that. Seventies clothes don't fail me. Let me guess. Max gets jealous of Goofy hogging all his popularity. Mm -hmm. 
It's weird hearing Jeff Bennett put on a teenager voice of all things. <laughs> I mean, that, didn't he voice Johnny Bravo? Yeah. Like I said, he's Dexter's dad, Dead. Like, yeah, it and is Johnny the... Bravo. Yes. Johnny Bravo is my favorite of his roles, actually. Yeah, the same. So, yeah, the gammas are all too welcome to you adding goof to the team. He also voices Clay from Shallon Showdown. Yes. Huh. Yes, he does. So I was like, him voicing a teenager is nothing new. There's a weird paradox with Have Bradley. Have to be only Lila with Stitch. <laughs> There, there's a weird paradox with Bradley. He's, he's over the, his, his animation is over the top. He's voiced by Jeff Bennett, and yet he's not given any f real funny lines. <laughs> so Max is actually pushing Goofy into joining the Gammas, his mentality being that eh, Goofy would just screw things up for the Gammas anyway, and that would also give him some space from his dad. Oh my god, that kid over there looks like Bigfoot from the first Goofy movie. Hmm. Is Did Bigfoot... Did someone have sex with Bigfoot and that kid was born? Do, Jova, I don't... Jova, once again, I'm gonna tell you, don't go down that road. That's Yeah, that's and, and, and this time, I don't wanna go down it either. <laughs> Shiroi? Nope. Dead. If you wanna... You want if you don't want to go down that road, Jova. <laughs> but 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 if, if you're gonna down that road, you go alone because I'm sure as fuck I'm not going. <laughs> it's your funeral. Well, it's a good thing I don't have a girlfriend. That way I can just bang this girl. Oh wait, didn't I have a girlfriend? Hmm. What happened to her? Don't worry, she'll be back in House of Mouse. Yeah, what did she? Well, no, no, no. We, we can just assume that they broke up. I guess, and then, and then after they, when Max ended college and became a a waiter at the House of Mouse, they met each other again. I don't know. That being said, I still think this movie should have given some kind of explanation to what happened to Roxanne. To oh honest. yeah, like I mentioned earlier. Ah, Ionic Pentameter. It's a form of poetry. Why is Buddha boy? Well, there you go. Uh, PJ just found himself a love interest as well. There you go. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's getting laid today, except for Max. Wait, no, Matt. Remember, Max had that first girl interested in him. Well, yeah, but he hasn't exactly gone after her, has he? <laughs> well. It's a good thing this 2000, year 2000 uh, club happens to have a, 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 a record player. Well, to be fair, they did show the cobwebs and dust he had to blow out from all that stuff. And honestly, as someone who went to my college as a kid with my dad when he hosted radio on it, yeah, you should see the archives that they have in there. They have stuff that can go back way far. Yeah, it's abundantly clear that the guy who who, who directed this movie uh, grew up in the 70s. Or at least was a teenager in the 70s. Yeah, how ironic is that? You thought this was going to be a big 90s extreme fest, but if anything, it's a love letter to the 70s. I wish it was still a love letter to the 90s. Oh, I take it you prefer the 90s over the 70s, Shiroi? Yes. Well, she grew up in those, not... So, well, I grew up in the yeah. 90s, too, and yeah, yeah, you know what? I can get preferring the 90s. Oh, no. Asia. Great. Well, 
Wow, Goofy can still bust a move. Then again, he was apparently good enough to give Powerline some inspiration, so yeah. That's Goofy. Still popping those moves actually, at the age of... Um... Actually, actually, honey, he's not a dog, he's a cat. Anything to get laid. A dog and a cat getting, uh, getting together. Yeah, the the, the 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 children are going to be very interesting, definitely. Yeah, cat dog. Well, I mean, don't 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 one of you guys ship a hedgehog with a cat. What? Uh, I think he means the Sonic and Blaze shippers. Ah. Uh. Uh... I, I didn't want to be too obvious. How lovely. Well, you know what? The animation's nice. Well, this is direct to um, DVD. Yeah, it's made, it's made, it was made by Disney Toon Studios, yes. And Disney Japan, I think. Trust me, it's definitely one of their better animated ones. Though I still yeah, think is. their best animated one is either Cinderella 3 or Lion King 2, in terms of how good the animation is. Uh, I think Butter Bear 2, for as terrible as that movie was, also had some pretty comparable to the original film type of animation. Like the animation, it's a phenomenally wasted uh, anima animation, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's still. The rings glow together because they're feeling things for each other? Uh. She is getting dangerously yeah, close to part. his. <laughs> Don't tell me she's a dog in heat. Wow, tr in true Disney fashion, only, only only took like one day. Well, it's not like they say it's true love or anything. More like just a case of they're dating now. In the meantime, Goofy's study. But that's not, not anymore. To, to, <laughs> Initiation to time! We have to press for the X game. Oh. Again, it's initiation time. Great. I take it you weren't really a frat boy. Well, I never went to college to begin with, Jova, but uh, I, take, I, I take a big. Um, I take a big. Uh, I hate initiation rituals in general. Bad experience with them? No, I didn't, but uh, I've, there have been people who, to give you an idea, Joe, but there are actually, here in my country, there are actually even cases where people being killed by poor tastes. In my opinion, those things should be forbidden outright, to be honest. They're called cultists. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that there aren't college students that don't give out perfectly harmless and in good fun but uh, a lot of them, at least from, at least over here, um, use them for very nefarious purposes, and I, and in yeah. my opinion, it should, it should, it should just be, but because honestly, to me, it just comes across as an excuse to be an asshole. I do get, to be honest with you, I do get where you're coming from. Not all of them are like that, but it is a common occurrence. I never, and, and, and even the harmless ones, I was still argue, to me, it just comes across as an excuse to be an, an asshole to freshmen. To be honest with you. I never did get around to joining a fraternity, so I never got an experience with that. I was just morely busy with studying and hanging out with pals here and there. Sure, Those sure, aren't sure. even really a thing over here, actually. So. I, don't, I don't think the one I want to do had. There's not a thing over here, issue, but they still have initiations for, for freshmen. Hmm. That still isn't even a thing here. Being said, uh, that being said, uh, fortunately, over the last few years, uh, that's actually one of the few cases where I actually do uh, do uh, approve what the press is doing. The press has been demonizing them over over recent years, which is uh, something that I will do myself as well anyway, so I can't really comment on it. I agree. Hey, get it? He's called Ken Clark. That's one letter off from Clark Kent. You know, the interesting thing about that, that oh, actually, no, I'll wait till this is done. And we have Jeff Bennett also voicing as the announcer guide, which, to be fair, 
Yeah, I totally get hiring Jeff Bennett to play the announcer guy. He just seems to have a natural voice for that. Yeah, we also have to, yeah, we also have to remember that these movies were made on a tighter budget, so obviously they're going to have to cut some corners. Okay, look, I don't really have as much a problem with it. I totally get it. That said, though, it can also be a case where... Yeah. It was mostly just Deji that was anything at possible laziness. I think my only thing is... I didn't say laziness, it was just saving money. That's extremely common. Yeah. I guess the I only guess. weird thing is how obvious it is. Like, normally they try to differentiate the voices more, but... Well, okay, okay, to be fair, Jeff Bennett did differentiate his two voices. If anything, his announcer voice is the voice we normally associate with him more anyway. Mm-hmm. Hey, Cal, Kids Like Sword is one of my favorite shows. <laughs> it's like, uh, now we're in voice the, actors are. Now we're in the X Games, are we? Yeah. No, like, like I said, uh, being Portuguese, I appreciate an actor who can uh, be super versatile. Okay, let me let me show you, tell you about a show that I liked watching. It's called uh, Marvel Superhero Squad. Most of the most of the male characters were all voiced by Tom Kenny. Captain America, Iron Man. Oh yeah, but that one did it I very well. I think as well. But it's Tom, Tom, Tom Kenny is awesome. So that's yeah, I think all the females were voiced by Grey Delisle. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Here's the thing about Superior Squad, though. That one did it well, and again, with the actors managing to change up their voices enough for each one. Mm-hmm. We're just not going to comment on the fact that it looked like there may have been rockets under that skateboard, but okay, yeah, no, he's just straight up fire. To give you, uh, here, let me let me give you a basic uh, idea. Which is, well, Jervis, he was already straight up fired earlier in the movie. <laughs> True. Tens out of ten. Oh, wow, the UK gave him ten. Uh, Germany gave him nah, nine. nah, Germany gave him a nine. Uh, Q in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater music, I guess. I got the minute. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's yeah, not allowed. Yeah, okay. No, I'm sorry. How does how does no one see that? Yeah, it was a trick of the light, and he's just that gas dang Tomb Raider good. Let me uh, let me give you a basic rundown, uh, a basic idea, that you, just so you can get a good idea. The same over here, the same actor who plays Olaf from Frozen also plays played Ramses in Prince of Egypt, um, and uh, Eugene from Tangled. Yeah, that's fine. You gotta do the nine hundred. And a 4.2 from the Russian judge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, German Deji one actually did. A deadly question, actually. Go on. Uh, what was more impressive, the first time Tony Hawk did the uh, 900 or the time he did it when he was pushing 50? Pushing 50. Well, that should be because the fact that he can still do it at his, yeah. that he still <laughs> skateboards at his age shows that he does it for the love of the sport rather than yeah, isn't that kind of obvious, though? Well, I mean, sometimes it uh, sometimes some, some people might like something for one reason or uh, um, the other. Sec end of second act breakup. Well, okay. To be fair, Max does feel humiliated. Like, imagine being outdone, outclassed in something that you consider, you know, your prime skill, hey. and it's by your dad in front of all your friends. Based on a lie, though. Not That's just too, that, yeah. but you're Max. You're the one who encouraged him to join your your rivals team. Just saying. That is a good point. Mm -hmm. Max will later They're... reflect on that, but yeah, it is kind of an awkward break. Like that's like uh, that, that, that'd be like if I urge Jova to join a um, a British sports team, but it just happens to be my biggest rivals. But then he single-handedly wins the match, and then I yell at him, Jova, you're ruining my sports team! You wanted me to join the team! I'm really I feel- But, I, but now... I thought that would mean you'd fail, not succeed. Right now, I'm really feeling the, the absence of Kevin Lima. 
Kevin Lee, man, Kevin the Lee? writer? The, the, time, the, the, the director of a goofy movie. Yeah. And uh, Enchanted. Speaking of which, you looking forward to that sequel? Oh boy, another uh, 1970s big blip alligator moment. Well, I mean, well, well uh, this well, actually the same year this film came out. He also, you know, the Hundred Two Dalmatians, which was directed by him, came out. That reminds me, is uh, so is that good? Oh wait, Hundred and Two uh, Dalmatians. It was just, it was just kind of average in my opinion. I liked it. Most of us ended yeah, up liking it a lot, actually. Basically, Dash, it knew to take advantage of Glenn Close, and it did it to okay. immense victory. Okay, Goofy, you really, really need to cut down on the drugs. This is... Just because you're dressed like you're in the 70s doesn't mean you're in the 70s. I get that college is, uh, you know, well, the time for experiments, I get that, but no. still. Not during an exam, though. Yeah. Oh look, it's a reverse sure. of the nightmare from the first movie. Yeah. Kind of. And he died. It's a dream. Or a hallucination, or something. God damn it, Goofy! What did they slip into your drink? <laughs> I I remember this scene. This little bit. Here. Symbolic. Hey man, how long has that guy been sitting there? Uh, by my count, at least ten hours. Why have we been standing around watching him all this time? Congratulations, huh? Huh? Hmm. Oh come on! Tell me you wouldn't laugh at that eventually. Oh god, that is It's so... useless in the real world written by a multi billion dollar company. That wants to I mean, I mean, well, I mean to be fair, it's Pete talking. Yeah. I mean just just because it was written from people working at a company doesn't mean it reflects them in this in their entirety. I'm joking. Jeez. But then you have heard people say that seriously. But it's me. That's the thing though, Deji. Half the time I can't even tell if he's joking or not. Hmm. The perfect throw. Yes, I know what I'll become now. A sh horseshoe tosser. No way, that doesn't sound right. Don't. You know, You're off to a great yeah. start. What, what, the T word? Actually, you missed a bit of the movie, Pete. Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah real shame you weren't there for that much. I don't want to be known on my own. I don't want to be known after my dad. And now his dad is known as more rad than him. Sorry, Max. Uh, sorry, Max. But uh, no matter, uh, truth be, truth be told, uh, Goofy will always be more iconic than you. He's Goofy. Yeah, yeah Max. You were, you you haven't been relevant in twenty years. To be fair, I was gonna say, when was the last time Max has shown up in anything? To be fair, exactly. I I blame that more on Disney. Not so much Max not being as popular as Goofy. No, that was always gonna be the case, but. After House of Mouse, Disney just kind of stopped doing everything with the extended Mickey cast. Yeah, it wasn't until recently that they decided to finally use Scrooge McDuck again. 
Well, the, well, they, they, well, the Mickey Mouse shorts do have the classic 1940s and 30s uh, cast. Uh, well, what I mean is like, well, after House of Mouse, they kind of just stopped doing anything with the whole cast outside of Kingdom Hearts games. Mm-hmm. Guys, well, I'm trying to think. I, I remember really? the reason why Donald wasn't in the DuckTales. The, the thing about... Wait. I, I remember that Donald was in the original DuckTales show was because they were like, eh, Donald's too popular and he might overshadow Scrooge McDuck. So mm. basically, Max... That's why they made Launchpad. Mm. Go on. So basically, Max has decided to transfer out of the college because, well, yeah, there's only one room for one goof here. Yeah, remember, there are two character arcs going on in this movie. One for Max and one for Goofy. I'm sorry, whatever gave you the inkling that Goofy was athletically challenged? Did you see what he did in the last movie? Dover, the last movie doesn't exist, selectively. <laughs> also, this is no reason to transfer out of your college. Yeah, this is a bitch move. Yeah. My dad's yeah, that's there, a... I'm leaving. I, oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. I, I get it. Max is definitely, again, he wanted his independence, and he feels that that kind of got ripped away. So I get it. He's a bit whiny about it. I do feel like the movie needed to be longer to show more of Max's struggles with this, though. As a kid, I like this movie just fine. Heck, I actually saw this movie before seeing the original Goofy movie. So but, do I. Yeah. That, I mean, don't get me wrong. This movie is not terrible or, heck, even bad. It's perfectly fine. But that's just it, though. It doesn't reach the heights that the original Goofy movie went. The original Goofy movie was well above expectations at the time because it went above and beyond just being, well, a Goofy movie. It was an interesting character study and a look at how the different generations can bond but also grow apart as well here and there. This is sort of an extension of that, but I feel like your I feel like your enjoyment is best enjoyed if you consider this like the other half of the story in correlation with a goofy movie, essentially. You know, I feel like a better arc would have been. Let's let's go for it. Like, cause I feel like Max accepts his father for at one because he grew who was growing up with like Tom now. But I think a better arc for both of them to learn is like, okay, we can still connect, but we have to move on and do our own things they mm -hmm. kind of do that by the that's end kind of, but, yeah. but i feel like that should have been the whole point of the story instead of this yeah. instead of max wanting to get away from goofy mm -hmm. i don't particularly care for the whole one two i mean I, I, you can have your independence without uh necessarily acting like uh you need to get away from your parents like i don't i don't see how that those two things are inextricably linked well if you feel like you're smothered by your parents of course you'd be eager to get out of there that's kind of my sister's thing too and how she's all excited about moving out to chicago for college as well i yeah. get i do get it i'm not saying that it's not i'm not saying that's necessarily a good thing but i get it as a character thing as well in this case that said, I will agree. He looks just just like uh, Mickey from uh, the Rocky movies. Considering what happened to Mickey by the end, is this really the best outfit for him to wear right now? Well, you know what's sad? This is a better looking Mickey, in, in, better looking Mickey impersonation than the one from Ricky One. <laughs> Where he just had the hat on and he didn't even imitate his character at all. What year did Rocky come out? 1976. Okay, guys. Like, yeah, it's still sticking to the 70s feeling. Yeah, 70s. A straight A student. Yeah. What twist? It turns out there was some other person named Goofy that got that grade. 
Goofy's twin brother? Yeah, Luffy. No, wait, no. Ah. <laughs> this is why he's leaving. Also, um, dude, you're in college, Goofy's an adult. They're all adults here. Yep. Are they? Technically, yes, you're right. Uh, when you're a teen, you're officially an adult. Not here. Well, in most countries, yes. I'm guessing yours is still, uh, is, uh, 21? 18. Well, that's what I said, 18. Wait. <laughs> How old are your college students? Uh, 18 at least. 18 at least. Yeah, you have to be 18. Well, obviously there's the occasional 17-year-old one, obviously, yeah. but 18 is the usual age, yes. We have 18. Because here it's 16 to 18. Oh, okay. So I got way, oh, way, yeah, some way in a minute. Oh. They've been cheating all along. They nah. even have a chance about it. Uh, Come on, boss. Uh, boss, got... maybe you shouldn't be saying the word cheat so liberally. The, that idiot could be listening in to us. But what kind of villain would I be if I didn't just talk about my evil plan out loud? Well, having a rented and glow. <sighs> Basically, Shiro, like, okay, if I remember correctly, Jova, you need, over there in America, you need to be at the least 21 to drink alcohol, I think, legally. Isn't that, isn't that uh, how it is? Yes, yes. Well, oh, I'm guessing it depends on the state as well. Um, it's, it, it, it's generally 21. It's generally 21, yeah. Over here, it's both, it's 18 for both. It's, you're officially an adult at 18, and you can also drink alcohol, both at 18. But some, some countries have a separate... Oh, adults one thing, alcohol is the oh, other thing. Oh yeah. boy, here we go. I never understood that. You're an, you're an adult, but you can't... You're officially an adult, but you, can't, you still can't drink alcohol. And there it is, guys! The ESPN logo! Not even a parody, it's literally the ESPN I mean, logo. If you, if, you own, if you own it, might as well take it, man. Oh, uh, okay, okay, also, okay. Oh my god, this guy really should not have skipped like that. Okay, okay, no. okay. Like I mentioned, Edge, one of the complaints people have about this movie is that they feel that it reflects when Disney started to go with a more corporate image and more boasting about how they owned the stuff as opposed to just, you know, being they good movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That. Well, that's the thing, dude. This, it, is where people, just... this is where people feel that it started to get a little out of hand. Like, you know, Disney as we know them now, this is sort of where that trend began. Wow, you know, people yeah. on Goof Troop got cancelled. Uh, okay, we just met, I guess, Goofy's number one fanboy. Yeah, yeah, that's the that that's the biggest fan of Goof Troop. What Biddy just said. All right, rock climbing. Okay, you've got cameras. How the fuck did you catch that? So how are they gonna cheat here then? You'll see. Yeah. Okay, um, this is meant to be an advert for the X Games. It's a really, really shitty one. They're basically allowing people, basically, are saying, the X Games, we allow, we allow people to get away with cheating. Oh, but that's the, well, actually, Dwarves. Okay, have, okay, okay, Dwarves. Mario and Sonic is meant to be an advertisement for the Olympics, and then you have all the crazy crap that happens in that game. 
Also, Dweebs, I would suggest you wait till the end of the movie before you think that they do get away with the cheating. Man, they've been getting, man, away, man, with man, for... man. They've been getting away with this for years, Jova. Man, we need caught... to show Dweebs the Rocket Power movie, then. Oh, boy, the Rocket Power movie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what, hap what happens in that one? Is that basically... Is that like a is that like a fictionalized dramatization of the Russian Olympic cheating scandal or something? Not Olympics, but and and not, but wasn't it also an X Games in that one? Yes, I believe one? so. What's it called? Rocket Power. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. Well, PJ's dead. This was before our camera technology got to the point where we could zoom in on him doing that. That being said, though, yeah, PJ's probably dead. Uh, who voices him again? Uh, PJ? I don't know. Let me check. Well, it was Paulie Four as another guy. No, no, no. no, no, no. That's Bobby. Um, PJ. Uh, mm. Rob Paul. Oh, Rob Paulson. Oh, there you go then. <laughs> he knows that Jigufi would have thought that that was funny. <laughs> He'll be coming in his own iconic goofy way. No, 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 his feet are not on the ground. <laughs> I love how, I love, I love how satisfy, uh, satisfyingly he says that. Not by my watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you, you've done such a good job noticing all the other rule break. He's just like really proud of his watch. Not just that, no, no, honestly, sure, to me, he just comes across like he genuinely hates Bradley too. And well, he's just happy to rub that in his face. <laughs> I guess probably because Bradley's been winning constantly year after year. Even if he weren't cheated, you get you'd get sick of it eventually. He should he should be a wrestling referee. Oh no! There's a grandma on the on the course. This looks like a this looks like the setup for an Earthworm Jim joke. <laughs> uh, excuse me, you're not allowed walkie talkies. <laughs> oh my god, there's oh, no. Mickey Mouse! Yeah. I know, he's, he's, he's stuck in that cage again and won't come out. Again, just to remind you, Mickey Mouse is a popular figure who, you know, Goofy is good friends with. It just shows how proud Goofy is that he doesn't mooch off of his friend. Rigged. You guys say, oh, it, it would have been funny if he if he if he sabotaged the wrong bike. Yeah. Well, they're color coded for convenience. The commentary is able to follow them even off track, but they're not able to pick up the very obvious cheating. Oh, Cartoons. Like the... It's kind of like um, it's kind of like that uh, Pokemon race episode in the Pokemon anime uh, where, where Ash rides the, that pony, uh, where uh, Team yeah, Rocket it cheats like Rapidash. Hell. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Team Rocket cheats like hell, and somehow, no, even though they have cameras and everything, nobody notices.
Thank you, Mr. Fish. That was very, uh, that was very contributing of you. That was, it was totally worth the, um, the five piece, pieces of paper that were used to animate that fish. And how about the money that probably went there? This looks more like digital animation to me. Um, no, it's uh, the, the the animation itself is Andromeda. It's just that the 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 coloring is digitally is digital. Uh, that nice. was the usual. That was the usual standard for direct t direct to video uh, slash TV animation at the time. Oh boy, um, here we go. At this point in time, there was only the theatrical movie animated movies were still painted by hand and even then they were starting to transition into just digital ink and paint in general all right so time to get murderous it took you that long to press a button <laughs> maybe it's kind of like in freakazoid we is about to press the button we interrupt this program to increase dramatic tension Thank you. And now back to our program. But we're going to continue the race anyway. Sorry, Tank. Your friend Bradley left you to burn. So, Literally. Also, also, is it, uh, also, is it just me or has Max been transported into a post-apocalyptic uh, uh, world? Again, there's a like, fire burning. Uh, so Look at this. Is this is this Disney's version of Mad Max? Don't you see? This is what the X... Ah, get it? His name is Max. <laughs> there you go. See this? There you go. You gotta love how Bradley hates being ignored to the point that he was willing to kill his own team member just so he could finish the race properly. Looks like it's all over. Look at the burn alive. Oh well. Probably, okay. He was probably finally getting his teammate killed. What a you should halt the games and deal with this. No, 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 no. Sorry, we're gonna see how this ends. Just an announcer. What can I do? There was literally attempted murder at this race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There was everything! There was deceit! There was cheating! There was attempted murder! This is the greatest X Games ever! It wasn't. Ah, uh, he does goofy son. Yeah, he is goofy son. It was mm -hmm. a fast going up to a disaster. Really? Oh boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, now. And down, down goes ESPN. <laughs> so, yeah, Bradley's definitely dead. But it's and okay. nothing of value was lost. You know, I just like to imagine that the campus went back to completely being normal after that day. Like, yeah, you know that. Let's let's just pretend that didn't happen. Are people gonna use that scene if Disney ever closes down ESPN? Yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> well, what did it? They did just close out that that NBA section in Disney World. Don't worry, Dad. It's totally only temporary. So yeah, Goofy has finally graduated. First movie, yay! See, I did the thing that I did in the first movie.
And now they go separate ways. And then, and then Max is all like, wow, uh, wow, my dad uh, has gotten himself a girlfriend and, I'm, and I somehow lost mine in for inexplicable reasons. Oh, wait, here we go. Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's his name. Oh, hey, Fumper. Yeah. Seriously, what was with the Bambi animals there for a bit? Uh, Disney cameos. Shut up. Oh, yeah, he's getting laid. I could make a really dirty joke right now, but... Uh... Go ahead! So, that was a sometimes extreme goofy movie. Exactly. I forget if there's an after credits scene. No, there isn't. There's there's a dan there in the credits scene you see the characters dancing with nothing. Oh, nothing so else. yeah, so there are during credits footage. Yes. So that was an extremely goofy movie. Was it everything you imagined? No, not really. I mean, not terrible. It's just uh, it was I mean, fine. I mean, yeah, but there were some good bits in it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just not as it's just not as good as a goofy movie. And uh, again, you know, the whole um, I don't think it's a very good advert for what it's advertising. It blew up an ESPN blimp. <laughs> uh, they advertised the X Games as allowing people to get away with cheating. They advertised colleges not being as fun as the. They claim it to be. And, um, so yeah, other than, other than the lies, uh, this movie was just fine. <laughs> Are those your final thoughts, Stribs? Yes. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, rock on, characters! Oh, she's doing the John Travolta there. Yes. <laughs> Next. Because, because uh, Come on, Dedge. Uh, I enjoyed it. It's not as good as the first one, but for what it is, it's perfectly fine. Like I like like we've talked, I feel like the character arc between Goofy and Max could have been handled a lot better here. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm fine with Goofy going back to school just to get be college educated and whatnot. And he loses focus, is but then has to regain it, which is, this is not, not a bad, not a bad thing to go with. Um, again, it's just a relationship between him and Max. This is a directed D video movie, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you can tell that with the animation quality. Not that it's not bad, that. but yeah, not that it's bad. It's just, eh. You can, you can tell that there was something lacking. Hmm. Like I said, most uh, of the animation budget must have gone into Bradley because he's the one who has the most over-the-top animation in the movie. Carry on. Yeah, yeah uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a movie. An extremely goofy, goofy movie. movie. There <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a sort of hand to say that. Uh, yeah. Next. Um, Pedro. Uh, it's mediocre. Like, um, it, like it's harmless at the end of the day. But uh, like as you said, the the character arcs are poorly thought out, and and the movie does just doesn't really have much to much to do with the characters. To be honest with you. Like um, they do this thing where oh, like uh, he wants maximum independence, whereas Goofy takes advantage of his unemployment to get to college and be close to his son and everything. But then, uh, then they have a second half breakup because Max can't take it. Then they then they run off together. But then Max is all sorry, Goofy's all proud. But again, again, the the the, the entire thing feels very by the numbers. Like they have this, uh, they have these character arcs and uh, that they're pulled off in, in the most 
bare bones basic way and with no nothing interesting uh, happening in between the other the new characters they introduce are whatever um what the hell is roxanne and um uh and yeah it's not like the lack of the lack of power line is also very very noticeable as well because uh you know um it just doesn't it just doesn't really have much of us much of us like again it just does the bare minimum to not suck but that's all it really does it's a very mediocre movie that doesn't yeah really yeah you can tell that they didn't really know what to do in terms of making a sequel to the original film so they just well let's just it's college and that's it like it doesn't really do anything interesting it's just a very mediocre movie that doesn't really have much that doesn't really know what to do with its characters so it does the, the most bare bones stuff that it can muster to just make something that's at the very least acceptable and that's really it that's the, that's that's gonna be the new name of this film an extremely mediocre goofy movie or how about this an extremely acceptable just to make it even more uh wordy i guess that might anyway. be weird because page is the only one who's described it as such a other group but eh, whatever Whatever, the, it's I'm... fine. It, it, it's medi- it's fine, but uh, it's nothing. I I go out my way to sing because there's not that much to to it anyway. Carry on. I'll go next. It's an extremely fine movie. It's an extremely goofy movie indeed, and that they do crank up the goofiness indeed. As far as I'm concerned, it's a good movie. It gets what it needs to get done. What is unfortunate is that it doesn't go as above and beyond as the original Goofy movie did. Like, again, I'd say that the character arcs are there, but like Dad's mentioned, they're not done as well as they could have been, essentially. I get Max wanting his independence, but I feel like the movie needed to be longer to focus more on that, essentially, as opposed to making it just seem like Max is being a whiny brat, essentially. Now, he does eventually see reason, but still, though, it's a bit of a yikes. That said, though, the actual action and comedy are fine for me, honestly. I could easily rewatch this any time, especially if it's after watching a Goofy movie. It's it, it's not as good as the original, and sadly, the album is not as great as the original Goofy movie either, which is a shame. It would have been nice to get some throwbacks to Powerline, but alas... Um, but yeah, overall, it's a fine movie, you know? I enjoyed it as a kid, and I still can enjoy it now. So, Shiroi, that just leaves you for capping off our cavalcade of comedic films. Because, let's be honest, I think this is still the best of the comedies that we are- that we've seen in this bunch. Like, that was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that- that- that's not, like, any negative- like any negativity towards this movie, mind you, because this is a lot better. But yeah, the bar was pretty low oh, yeah. to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. Uh, but hey, it, I I guess is it a better movie than Shrek? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Some may think so. I like it more than Shrek. If that helps you. Okay. All right, anyway. Yeah, this was fine. I mean, got some decent laughs out of it. But unfortunately, since, like, you know, these movies are about uh, Goofy and Max's relationship, and it's, you know, unfortunately the weakest part of this movie. Mostly because of writing reasons, though, as you guys mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't anywhere near as heartfelt as it could be, comparing it to the first movie. Which it, we it, saw earlier this year. Yeah. And very two thousand. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's fine. Uh just not as good as it could have been. And that's it for this one, I think. So, that was an extremely goofy movie, everybody. We'll see you for whatever comes next our way.